Hello and welcome to Show and Tell with me, Stephen Leslie, the series where I show you some photos and then tell you about them, a process which has led me to call this show Show and Tell, uh, just to clear up any lingering confusion. Uh, today, amazingly, is episode 15 uh, and what I want to talk about today is something that I'm going to label the curse of Alex Webb. Now, uh, before anyone gets all upset, um, I should state for the record that I like Alex Webb's photography. I think he's amazing. However, I do think that he has unwittingly unleashed a curse or a plague upon the world. And I'm going to try and explain all that after the titles. <laughs> So when you think of Alex Webb's photos, uh, what do you think of? If you're familiar with his work, I bet you think of uh, photos taken in hot, faraway countries and busy, complex images like this. Alex Webb is a member of Magnum and he seems to do little else except jet round the world producing intense, complicated images that burst from the pages of books such as The Suffering of the Light, and La Calais, Istanbul, the list goes on and on. And look, I'm not going to do a whole episode praising the pants off Alex Webb. Um, there's quite a lot of those out there already by other people. So if you want to go and watch um, some people gushing all over Alex Webb's work, then uh, it won't take much for you to go and find videos like that uh, here on YouTube. Um, what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to look at one particular aspect of his work and one particular photograph uh, in detail and try and explain how I think that uh, photo has spread like a pernicious cancer throughout the world of street photography. Um, now, the first thing to bear in mind, uh, and something that you might find unusual, is that Alex Webb uh, started taking photographs in black and white, uh, which might sound surprising given how well known and how masterful he's become with colour. But in the mid-1970s, Webb was taking photos in Mexico uh, like these. And while they're nice, they weren't exactly setting the world alight. And uh, he's explained that he almost contemplated giving everything up and going and becoming an alpaca farmer instead because he felt he hadn't found his own photographic voice until a trip to Haiti changed everything and he started to use, understand and appreciate colour properly. And look, Alex Webb has mastered colour. That's not exactly up for debate. I could just keep on showing you colourful web bangers from now until sunset uh, without any repetition. Uh, the problem is that in 1996 he went back to Mexico and he took this photograph. Now obviously this is an absolutely lovely image and I'm not questioning its beauty for one moment. The problem is that it's so lovely it has spawned a veritable cottage industry of imitators. With this one photo, I think, uh, Alex Webb unleashed a tsunami of terrible silhouette photos that shows absolutely no sign of slowing down or relenting. And I, for one, am getting pretty sick of it. I should point out, of course, that Alex Webb wasn't the first photographer to appreciate the power of a good silhouette. Uh, there were plenty of other photographers before him. Saul Leiter did a couple himself. And this one, by Richard Sandler, taken in Grand Central Station, is simply phenomenal. But no other photographer, in my opinion, is so associated with silhouettes as Webb, and no other photographer has a signature silhouette image that's as strong and as well known as this one. Uh, but before we go on, I thought it might make sense to give you a brief history of silhouettes, because whatever you think of them as a stylistic technique, uh, they do have um, a surprising and unexpected genesis. So the term silhouette is a French term and it comes from one particular human being. Yes, there was actually a Monsieur Silhouette and his name was Etienne de Silhouette and he was the finance minister in Louis XV's government in the mid-1700s in France. And that's an important fact because Etienne de Silhouette was ridiculed and criticised because of how he chose to decorate his home. Uh, he chose to do it not with full colour portraits, but with shadow profile art. Now, obviously, this technique of cutting out a profile has been around for ages, since Grecian times even. Look, here it is on some ancient urns. 
but in the 18th century it came back into fashion and was very popular here in the UK, particularly among the middle classes, who maybe couldn't afford to commission a full colour portrait, and so a shaded profile was a cheap alternative. Therefore, when the French finance minister decided to decorate his home in this fashion, it was seized upon by his political enemies who used this as an excuse to label him a cheapskate and a skinflint. And that association has forever lasted and his name has become the way that we describe this, this technique. Now, fast forward a few hundred years and along comes Alex Webb who takes the silhouette issue to a whole other level. Although strangely, my problem with silhouette shots, other than their ubiquity, is not a million miles from the issue they presented way back when Etienne de Silhouette caused the original scandal. Back then, the charge levelled was one of being cheap. Silhouettes did away with detail, and that's certainly a criticism that's still valid. Silhouettes work by eradicating detail. They reduce everything, especially a person and particularly the face, to nothing but an outline. And in street photography, that's usually problematic because they remove character and information. Looking at a photography silhouette is a bit like reading a redacted dossier. You don't get the full story. But there's something else going on here as well. The popularity of silhouettes is quite extraordinary. If you take a quick look over on Instagram or Flickr and have a poke about, you soon realise that there's photographers out there who do nothing but take silhouettes. I mean, this is all they bloody do. Silhouette upon silhouette upon silhouette. It's just terrifying. Although in the interests of sticking with the theme, I'm not going to name and shame anyone here. I'll let them remain anonymous, uh, just like they render their subjects. There are also tons and tons of silhouette tutorials. Um, you know, if you have a look here on YouTube, um, you can find people getting far more views than I ever will get. Not that I'm bitter or jealous or anything, just teaching you how to make an awesome silhouette. I mean, look at this one. It's had 264,000 views. I mean, it's, it's quite extraordinary. Um, done badly, a silhouette is tacky. It's like a corny Valentine's Day card, or even worse, a semi-erotic dance routine from the 1970s. Um, at this point, I was going to show you some James Bond opening title sequences, which love their silhouettes, but apparently if I do that, I could be subject to a huge copyright claim. Uh, so I'm not going to, but you get the drift. Silhouettes have always been associated with a kind of faux eroticism. They can be a way of showing you a naked woman or a man without being too explicit. But here's the thing, most silhouettes in photography aren't even erotic, they're just boring and repetitive, and it's now become a virtual style of street. Um, just acres and acres of this. A colourful background and then some cookie cutter human shape to break it up. I mean, don't people get tired with this? It's literally monotonous. It reduces people to interchangeable outlines with no real defining features. Maybe, though, there's something else going on here. Maybe what the rise and relentless flood of silhouettes represents is a fear. A fear of taking people's photographs and a fear of actual interaction or contact. For many years, surely, the best street photography has been photographs that show us what people look like in detail. This photo by Jeff Milmstein is brilliant because it shows us this bloke in detail. Look how wet and wrinkled that book is. It's not the first time he's shoved it in his gob, is it? But now, imagine if it was a silhouette. Not quite as effective, is it? The same goes for this Martin Parr shot. You wouldn't be able to see the girl's face. Or this one by Vivian Mayer. Or even this one by Joel Sternfeld. None of those photos were afraid to show us their subjects in detail. In fact, the photographs relied on it, they depended on it. But to me, so many modern silhouette photos look as if they're trying to circumvent any conflict or any contact. They don't want to engage. Maybe they don't want to risk upsetting, but the result is that they just end up using people as props. It doesn't matter what they're doing or who they are, they're just needed to disrupt the colour. Alex Webb's original image, however, is brilliant. There are several stories going on at once here. The flirting couple in the foreground are mirrored by the man and his child silhouetted in the background. For a moment, we think that maybe they are the couple's shadow, but they're not, although they could be their future. And the fact that it's happening outside the civil registry office where marriages take place 
just makes it even more resonant and charged. And then there's this character here, exiting stage left and preserving their anonymity with what looks like a sports magazine. It's a complex, fulfilling image that rewards prolonged viewing. And while it might be unfair, now compare it with any of these. There is no real comparison. There's nothing else going on. They're cheap imitations without any detail. They're gimmicks. It took me a while, but now I realise what all these truly anonymous silhouette shots remind me of. They bring to mind possibly the most famous silhouette ever. The one that tells you whether or not you're going to the ladies' or the men's toilets. That's what I think of whenever I see photos like this. The lavatory. And surely that's not what you want from your photography, is it? So take my advice, Alex Webb has taken a better silhouette photo than you or I ever will. So stop trying to ape him, go out, take photos with detail and your photography will be better for it, I promise. Uh, my name's been Stephen Leslie, thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you've enjoyed this, please uh, like the film or subscribe. A uh, little bit of news, so I'm going to be doing a talk in New York on April the 6th, Thursday, April the 6th, coming up in Brooklyn. Um, there's details, I'll put details uh, to that down below. That's free, so uh, if you're in New York uh, on that day, please come along, say hello. Um, I'm gonna be doing a workshop in Paris uh, towards the end of June. That's not free, but it will be uh, great fun, and it's with another great photographer called Nicholas Portnoy. Uh, and I'll put details to that down below as well, or just message me if you wanna get in touch. Uh, and also the book, the book is coming. And after Easter, uh, there will be big, exciting book news. Yeah, so lots going on. Uh, thanks for watching. There's, like I said, 14 more films that you can watch uh, that I've done already. And uh, yeah, thank you very much and see you again soon. Bye.